Hey, boys and girls, welcome to another edition of Mr. Bell's Math. Um, today we're going to be talking about comparing and ordering rational numbers. So let's go ahead and get started. This is going to be a long video. So the first, the essential question, what I want you guys to know by the time we finish this video is how to compare and order rational numbers. And remember, rational numbers are pretty much all the numbers, whole numbers, negative numbers, zero, decimals and fractions. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get started. Um, one way to order and compare rational numbers, you can write the numbers so that they are in all the same form, and that's really the best way to do this. All right, it's, it, you don't want to guess, you don't want to try to figure out, you know, oh, I'm looking at a decimal, I'm looking at a fraction. You know, let's put them all in the same form, whether they're all fractions, all decimals, my preference is all decimals, uh, and then they're just a lot easier to compare that way. There's actually, I think, a fewer steps if we go decimals rather than fractions. But I'm going to show you both ways. All right, so put them all in all the same form, such as equivalent decimals or fractions, and then you compare them. So your next question might be, what exactly is equivalent? Well, equivalent just means that they're equal. Okay, so one decimal is equivalent to a certain fraction. Okay, and I'll show you how to do that. So here's our first example. It says, order the following decimals from least to greatest. Okay, so I have 0 0.852, I have 0 0.741, and I have 0 0.369, and I have 7, 0 0.753. So I got those four decimals, we're going to order them. So probably the best way to do this is, is what I refer to as the stack method. Okay, you want to take all your decimals and stack them on top of each other while you are lining up your decimal. All right, so I got... I got my decimals, oh, pardon me, I got my decimals right here all lined up, okay? And that's that's the best way to do this because now you can compare um, your decimals doing that, all right? So we got, I just put them the same way they were listed here, 0 0.852, 0 0.741, 0 0.369, and 0 0.753. So how you do this is you start from the left and you work your way right. So the first thing I want to do is to look at this column right here. All right, they're all zeros. So that really doesn't tell me a whole lot. Okay, then I want to move on and look at this column and see what we got here. So I'm ordering them from least to greatest. That's what my, my instructions say, least to greatest. So I'm looking for the smallest number first. So the smallest number I see is this three. So guess what my first number is? My first number is going to be 0 0.369. So I want to write 0 0.369. All right, so that's my first number. I'm going to go and scratch that one out because I know I've done with that one. Uh, so the next thing I want to look at to see if there's anything else. So I got two sevens in here. They're less than eight. So the next thing I want to do is compare this column and see what's the smallest number. All right, but I'm only going to compare really these two numbers here because the seven once again is smaller than this eight so i want to i know one of these numbers is going to be next i just got to figure out which one so i got a four in this column and i got a five so four is smaller than five so my next number is going to be zero point seven four four one all right so that number is done that tells me the next seven number is the is the is the next one. So I have 0 0.753. That's that one. And I don't even have to check the last one really because that's the last one. So this is my final number. 0 0.852. Alright. So that's all there is to ordering decimals. Just use the stack method, stack them up line up the decimal and just start comparing from left to right all right so that's that one example two we're going to compare fractions and we're going to do the same thing we're going to compare these guys from least to greatest all right so i have two thirds i have three quarters and i have one six now this is a little bit different you're going to have to work a little bit more with fractions okay so in order to do it as a fraction, the first thing you want to do is you want to find the LCM or the least common denominator, least common multiple of all the denominators, and then use that to help you create equivalent fractions. Okay, so I want to list 
all the multiples of 3. All right, this is my first fraction right here, 2 thirds. So I'm looking at the denominator, and if you're not sure what a denominator is, 3 is in the denominator. So all multiples of 3, or not all of them, but the first, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, are listed. 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 4 is 12, and so on. Okay, then I want to go on and I want to list some of the multiples of 4. You know, the five or first 5 or 6 multiples are probably plenty. All right, so this is the second fraction, 4 is in the denominator, so I have one, 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 4 is 16, and so on. All right, and then finally the last denominator is 6, so I want to list the multiples of 6. 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 6 times 3 is 18, 6 times 4 is 24, and so on. Okay, so to find the least common multiple, I want to find the smallest number they have in common. All right, and it looks like to me the smallest number they share is 12. All right, so what that tells me is I'm going to have three fractions. Now, let me go back here. Thought I had something else there. Three fractions that are going to have 12 in the denominator. Okay, so I'm going to have those those three fractions with 12 in the denominator. So I want to rewrite this stuff as. So I want to look at my, first of all. I want to look at my first fraction, two thirds. All right, two thirds. And I want to say to myself, I know my fraction is going to have 12 in the denominator. So how did I get from 3 to 12? All right. In order to keep this thing equivalent, I multiplied by 4. Okay. I multiplied by 4. All right. So in order to keep it equivalent, I have to multiply the top by 4 as well. So 3 times 4 is 12. 2 times 4 is 8. Okay. So that's my first fraction. The second one I have is 3 fourths. How did I get from 3 fourths to a fraction with 12 in the denominator? Well, I multiplied that 4 times 3. All right. So that means I have to multiply the numerator by 3 as well. So 4 times 3 gave me 12. 3 times 3 gives me 9. All right. So my next fraction. So here's my first one. Let me go ahead and highlight these. This is my second one. And then my third one, I have 1 6, 1 over 6. And it needs to be a fraction with 12 in the denominator as well. So I multiplied 6 times 2 to get 12. So I have to multiply 1 times 2 and I get 2. All right. So this is my last fraction right here. Now, now that they have the same denominators, I can just compare the numerators and everything's fine. So I'm looking to compare least to greatest, least to greatest, so I'm looking for the smallest numerator. All right, so 2 is my smallest numerator. So that tells me that 1 6, 1 over 6 is going to be my first fraction. That's the smallest one. All right, then I have to compare um, 2 thirds and 3 fourths. 8 is smaller than 9, so 8, 8, no wait, I'm sorry, not 8 twelfths, what am I thinking, not 8 twelfths, 8 twelfths is the next one, but what I want to say is 2 thirds is my next fraction, okay, and that finally leaves 3 fourths as my final fraction, all right, so that is how you do fractions. So here's example three. This is like a conglomeration of everything. This is all of it. I got a fraction, I got a decimal, I got a negative number, and I have, well, I have a mixed number and I have a fraction. So this is how you do this. All right. We, for me, I like to com convert them all to decimals and just make my comparisons. Okay. So one and one fourth depends on your knowledge of fractions, but hopefully you can say, ooh, I know that 1 and 1 fourth is the same as 1.25. All right. Then I have 0 0.475. Negative 2 to turn that into a fraction. All I have to do is say negative 2.0. And then finally, 1 fifth, I might have to actually do some division. So remember, I taught you in class that a fraction is simply division. So I divide 1 by 5, 
Okay, you might say, Mr. Bell, you can't divide 1 by 5. It doesn't work that way. You have to put 5 on the inside. No, you can divide any number by any number. It may not give you a whole number, but you can divide it. So you have to add a decimal, make sure you line them up, and then add a 0. All right, now I can divide. 5 won't go into 1, so that's a 0, but 5 will go into 10. All right, 5 will go into 10 two times. 2 times 5 is 10. I subtract. I get 0. So the equivalent decimal to one-fifth is two-tenths, okay? So I have 0 0.2, I didn't get my decimal in there, 0 0.2 tenths. All right, let me erase this to here. Now I have them all in an equivalent format. I can go ahead and do that stack method that I told you. All right, so I have one, I'm going to line up the decimals, 2, 5. I have 0 0.475, I have negative 2.0, and then I have 0 0.2. All right, so those are my fractions all lined up. So once again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go from left to right to come up with my fractions, or my, my order. Um, first of all, I have a negative number, so I know that's to the left of 0, that's going to be my smallest number. All right, so that's my first one. I'm going to eliminate that, and I'm going to try to put it over here, over here on this side, because uh, I think the screencast-o-matic is going to cover it up. So negative two is my first number. All right. Then I want to compare the rest of them. So if I look at this column, you know, once I eliminate this this negative here, I have a zero and a zero, and I have a one. Well, guess what? One point two five is going to be my biggest numbers. Okay, so I'm going to try to put that one point to five right there so you can see it and that's my biggest number so I'm gonna put a comma there and I'm gonna to try to squeeze these other two numbers in there so I've eliminated that one All right. so now I have left 0 0.475 and I have 0 0.2 okay so I'm looking in this column right here because I've eliminated this column so the smallest number that I have of the ones that I haven't crossed out is four and two Let me kind of circle that because that's part of it Two is smaller, so guess what my next number is? All right, um, uh, zero point two, which was one fifth. So my next number is one fifth, and then that leaves zero point four seven five, which I'm not going to be able to fit in here. Zero point four seven five is my next number. So the order, I'll tell you what. Let me just erase this. Well, not we'll just leave it like that and call it quits. Um, negative two is the smallest number. One fifth is the next number, 0 0.475 follows that, and then lastly is 1.25, which is actually one and one quarter. All right, make sure you answer the questions.